Yesterday, I made a video about the impartation that Randy Clark was distributing at Bethel. <laughs> After getting a lot of criticism on their Facebook page, Global Awakening took that video down. Weird, huh? After telling everyone that the disturbing manifestations are from God, they removed their own video of those very manifestations. Well, now there's a new video that is equally disturbing. Here's what it looked like at Bethel's Healing and Impartation Conference on January 30th, 2020. This is the second day of the Bethel Healing and Impartation Conference in Redding, California, and Randy Clark is imparting something all right. According to Randy Clark's Global Awakening Facebook page, where this video was posted, this is a powerful move of God. Here's that Facebook page. Randy Clark is a proven false teacher and false prophet, and he's been teaching this stuff for decades. Here he is gushing over verified fraud and pervert Todd Bentley back in 2008. You were trained by the Holy Spirit as you laid out in him, and so that they want to go and look to your past and look to the stream you're drawing from, it's the stream of heaven, yeah. and they can't find anything negative in it, and you are like a, a you're like a, not a preacher nor a preacher's son, but uh, you're like Amos, this prophet that God has raised up to speak oh. to the church and to the world. And God is going to use you, Todd. We've been praying. What we were looking for when I went to see Rodney, and then I did come here in Lakeland. And uh, when I was prayed for, two weeks before I went to Toronto, and the fire of God came in my hands, and Rodney said all that about it. But it's interesting that it's starting again in Lakeland. Because it was initially, I believe it started in Lakeland and spread, you know, to Tulsa and, and, and to Toronto and Pensacola and, and Smithton and, and it went all over the world. But it's going faster this time. And, uh, and also to the, just the, the people that are watching on television, I know this is going to break out in major revival all over the world. And, it, and I'm just so proud of how you're answering. And it, it, I felt like, you know, sometimes they say, well, we can't believe in these, you know, healing evangelists and their $5,000 suits. Well, <laughs> they can't say that about you. <laughs> and I've watched him take food to the poor of Mozambique. This man has a heart for the poor, for the broken, for the widows. And uh, I just want to say, I believe in you. And I want to bless uh, what God is doing through you and bless the people tonight. And, and we'd just like to ask you one more time, just lift your hands Come up. Come on, impartation. And I want you to expect heaven to open. Uh, we believe that, uh, that another thing, people, uh, right, you were saved uh, right about the time this was going on in I Toronto. got saved in January 94 when the revival broke out in Toronto. Is, is right then, the right. Power of, I got saved right in January. But well, one of the things that we have watched in, in church history is often people who were touched, saved or touched, in the last move, become leaders in the next move. But you're right, usually the leaders of the last move can't bless. But, you know, Bill, our friend Bill Johnson has been talking about our ceiling as the floor for the next generation. And it's what we really want for you, Todd. So, Father, we pray. As we come together, streams coming together, oh. we pray that in this place of unity, that your spirit could not resist. Oh, come on. We ask you to unzipper heaven and pour out your Holy Spirit. And we ask God that there'd be a release of power coming oh. upon ministers. There'd be oh. people getting on fire in these meetings and taking it all over the world. We pray, Father, for the nations. We pray, Father, those watching on God TV and those on, watching on. Uh, on the internet, on. the pastors that are watching, they'd really experience. I bless you now. We come together. We bless you now in the name of Jesus and pray for the fire to come upon you. The fire of God to come into your hands. You begin to sweat. You begin to feel the electricity come that on. God would do to you, what he did to Heidi, what he did to Leif Hetland, and some others. Uh, 
Have you ever seen that? So, no, I haven't. Have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is you, Lord, but but what's going on here? Because it seems like it's chaos. I don't know what it means. We ask that, we're going to ask God to release fire on your hands as a sign that you're going to receive a healing anointing. And it's going to be multiplied. Some of you may begin to weep. You may begin to laugh. You may begin to shake. You may begin to sweat. You may begin to feel yourself bowed over, bent down by the glory of God and fire and electricity coming into your hands. There's fire. And so, Father, we just believe you're going to do it now. So let's wait on him. In Jesus' name, all over this place, God, release this sign to them that you are anointing them for an anointing for healing that they're going to take it back to their churches and the place you're going to send them now in jesus name now in jesus name release your electricity release your fire release your compassion god that people begin to weep for the broken and the sick and it be your compassion. Give it to him, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I see some of you already, the power of God, it's like 110. God, make it 220 in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray some of you would feel like you're getting electrocuted. And what God did to me at, in, in, uh, in, in Lakeland in 1994, two weeks before trial, he do to you, fire would come into your hands and it would even hurt. Fire, more, more electricity, electrocute him, God. Uh, have you ever seen that? I said, no, I haven't. Have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is you, Lord, but but what's going on here? Because it seems like it's chaos. I don't know what it means. Interesting thing for people that might not know is Randy Clark yeah. got a touch of revival right. in 1993. Right. And there was a wave that he came got touched by Rodney. Rodney Howard Brown. Yeah, it's been this incredible change. Which succession. had a great revival here in Lakeland. <laughs> That's right. It's full circle. And Rodney went to Toronto with John or not. That's right. It broke out. And it out. sparked the Toronto blessing. Which you, your church in Pasadena came into that too. Exactly. Went to Toronto. I received the impartation. John came in 1995 to Pasadena. Said, start protracted meetings. We started five nights for three and a half years. And we were given the ultimatum with the movement we were part of. We had to either shut it down or get out of the movement. I mean, you, John or not, <laughs> Randy Clark, Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson. I right. Mean, you guys George are real Banoff. generals of revival. So we were there. I mean, you, John or not, <laughs> Randy Clark, Heidi Baker, Bill Johnson. I right. Mean, you guys George are real Banoff. generals of revival. So we were there. And we were just having two days of seeking God. Bob Jones, Bill Johnson calls Bob Jones. We try to call you because we heard about the revival that was breaking out and we couldn't get a hold of you. And so Bill Johnson called Bob Jones and, and Bob Jones begins to prophesy. And he said, this is the third wave. The same thing you said last night, he said to us, he said, the first wave was Toronto. The second wave was Pensacola. And then he said, the third wave it's Lakeland and it's going globally. Coast to coast. <laughs> and we want to release that mighty Holy Ghost. In the Lakeland revival that was promoted by Randy Clark, Shayon, Bill Johnson, John Arnott, Heidi Baker, Bob Jones, and was broadcast live 24-7 on God TV fell apart within a month of this video. Once everyone discovered that Todd Bentley was a total fraud on national TV, who also abandoned his wife and young children. Can you supply us with three people who have been cured through miracle with their medical diagnosis, their names, their doctors, so that we can actually what what what, what I'll do see is them talk what I'll do is give you what we call a media package, which we've made available to other networks, and and I have one. My media secretary has one. If I have a thousand people consenting, I'll give you a thousand names. No, I just want three. But we we absolutely we'll give it to you. But we never got three. Instead, we were given a binder filled with what Bentley says are stories of inspiring miracles. It offered incomplete contact information, a few pages of incomplete medical records, doctors' names were crossed out. 
Come on! When we pressed further, we were given the name of a woman in California. Her husband told us the tumor on her uterus shrank after she saw Bentley, but he added that may just be coincidence because she was still getting medical treatment. He told us she is far too weak to talk to us. He did send us some of his wife's medical records from a clinic in Tijuana, Mexico, but she apparently insisted on obscuring the clinic's name and the names of the doctors. And so, not a single miracle claim of Bentley's could be verified. On Thursday, January 20, 1994, Randy Clark was ministering when the Holy Spirit took over the meeting and fell on 120 people. No one had any idea it would look like this. People were laughing, rolling, crying, falling down and speaking in tongues as they encountered God. We have, since I came to Canada, I have met some of the most wonderful people since this last January of 94 that I would have never met if God hadn't have privileged me to get to come and I've someone said I'm, I'm an official Canadian <laughs> but one such person the Toronto blessing was certainly lively people would be convulsed with wild laughter hundreds would be knocked to the floor at the same time see we were used to people receiving the Holy Spirit may be falling down one at a time. I'd never seen a whole room fall out like boom, they're all out. As some religious leaders heard of these events, they warned the signs and wonders were of the flesh or maybe even the devil. Looking back, both Arnott and Clark admit the signs and wonders were extraordinary. Uh, have you ever seen that? So, no, I haven't. Have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is you, Lord, but but what's going on here? Because it seems like it's chaos. I don't know what it means. It's just, let's not try and, you know, kill it. Let's just wait and see if there's good fruit that comes out. Heidi Baker was certain that her experiences moved her closer to God. I'd, I run to the altar and I lift my hands. I start screaming, yes! And the fire of God hit me. There was no altar call. And Randy Clark, who I'd never met, didn't know who I was, he said, God wants to know, do you want the nation of Mozambique? And that's not all God did. For seven days and seven nights, he left me incapacitated. I had to be carried. My husband carried me. All these people had to carry me. Then they'd have to carry me to the restroom. It was the most humbling, powerful time of my whole life. Baker learned she had to love and depend not just on Jesus, but his people as well. It was completely, totally life transforming. And I've never, ever been the same. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, have you ever seen that? I said, no, I haven't. Have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is you, Lord, but but what's going on here? Because it seems like it's chaos. I don't know what it means. Do you love me? more than the pull of religion to drag you back into an empty letter that kills and destroys and attacks out viciously. Do you love me? More than your father and your mother? Love me more than family ties and will you push out and will you push on to follow me with all your heart soul strength and mind or will you stop at the door looking in <laughs> These people desire to see manifestations. The weirder, the better. They've been saying all of these things and promoting their twisted doctrine for decades. It's not surprising that Randy Clark imparted something at Bethel, because that's what he and Bill Johnson and the rest of these NAR leaders are all about. This has been a messed up church production.
Please check out both the website and the YouTube channel for The Messed Up Church and for Fighting for the Faith. Stop following false teachers, read your Bible, and go to church. Thanks for watching. Fantastic, David. Hi. Oh, sometimes you think that heaven itself can't be much better than this, can it? We got heaven on earth right here. Lord, it's so good, so good, so good.